Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. The fly you see in the vise is something I call the swimming nymph. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a medium wire and it's finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Troutline. It's their sumo thread and it's at 30 denier. And as you can see, it's black. So first thing I'm going to do, as always, is get a little bit of super glue onto the shank of the hook. And then I can lay down a bed of silk. I'll just use my rat's tail here to try and keep my turns nice and touching. And then I'll run it all the way back to approximately where a barb would be on a hook. And I can take away my rat's tail. Now for the tail of this fly I'm using some marabou feathers uh, and it's uh, Troutline's pheasant. It's a beautiful, um, as you can see I've used some already but it's really thin and delicate uh, and that's what I want for this particular bug. It's not, a, it's not an out and out lure, it's a kind of hybrid if you like, a cross between a nymph and a lure. And I want it to be quite a delicate sort of tail here. So you see I've, I've picked out the the nice slim fibres there. It, I want it about the same length as the shank of the hook. So I can use that to measure it up. I'll just get a few turns to get it pinned down. And come in and remove my waist. So I'll just come back up to there. And don't worry about the mess, we're going to sort that out in a second. So I'm going to be using some soft wire, it's copper. As you can see this one's a, a uni copper, it's a medium copper wire. And I'm just going to catch that in where I parked my thread there for a moment. And then as I come down, I'm going to come to where I want my body to start. Just move that wire rib so I can see what's happening. That looks okay. So, for the body itself, I'm using some pure squirrel dub from Troutline. I've got a little bit out the packet here. I might need a little bit more. In fact, I'm definitely going to need a little bit more. But we'll start with this. And then, if we need to... Get some more dubbing on, that's easily enough done. Now that's not a bad start, but I do want to build the body up. I want to create a little bit of a taper into my body. And I can do that, instead of using the thread to do it, I can do it with the dubbing. Now this is a fly that works really well when the fish are not quite sure what they're wanting. You know, sometimes you, you'll go nymph fishing and, and they'll want a bit of movement. Other times they'll want it completely static. So it always pays to have a, a variety of different flies to entice the fish. Now I'm leaving quite a big area. I think I've just about got that. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Just not happy with the profile quite yet. I can always add a little bit more dubbing just to get that. There we go. That's a bit better. So next I'm going to bring my medium wire rib over. I want to have it between two and three millimeters apart. I'm looking for four to five turns on the body. And then when it comes round, I can catch that in. Once I've got several turns over the wire, I'm going to get several turns in front, then I can simply come in and helicopter the wire away, like so. Now I want to, at this stage, I want to straggle out the body a bit, so I'm going to come in with my Velcro brush, which is, I'm going to have to replace the Velcro on this shortly, shortly. And just pull it out a little bit and because I've used 
quite a lot of the squirrel dub in there to create that taper. I'm getting a pleasing effect. So when the fly is wet, you get that sort of cloaked, cloaked look over the rib. So there we go. Next thing I want to do is add in the thorax cover. And I'm simply using uh, some pheasant tail. And I'll probably take between six and seven fibers fibers off the pheasant tail. It's got stuck in my fingers underneath the scissors, but there we go. Now, it doesn't really matter which way I tie this in, but what I'm going to do is take away the really thin bits at the top just to leave me a square finish. And then I can come in and catch that on. Now the original swimming nympha tied, uh, I've got a few in my box, they were fairly straightforward, it was a straightforward pattern. Uh, on this one we're going to add some partridge, this is English partridge as you can see, to save a bit of time I've already uh, stripped away the waste at the bottom and I've got my Christmas tree effect going on and what I want to do before I catch it in is simply trim there and then directly on top of where I've got my thorax cover I'm going to catch in that English partridge and this is going to give us a, a kind of leggy effect if you like so uh, you could use a contrasting dub if you want but I'm simply going to come in with a little bit more of the squirrel it's not a pattern with uh, any kind of bling to it it's just a more natural buggy looking pattern and sometimes the, the answer I mean I'm a big believer in putting colour into flies and I like to have a bright red head or a, a hot orange spot in the thorax but sometimes the fish just only want drab patterns and it does make a difference so it's good to have a few drabber patterns in your box just for them days where the fish have seen all the colour they can put up with and what they want is more natural looking patterns. Now before I bring my various covers over I'm going to again come in try and ease out some of the dubbing. Don't want to come in too hard uh, and take out my thorax cover and my legs here with the English partridge. Now when I pull the English partridge over the top. What I want to do is the feathers originally were going this way, yeah, uh, because I've Christmas treed it while I was while I was um, tying it in. It's going a different way. Now I've not quite got the the size right, so what I'm going to do is just ease out some of the fibers there. Don't know how well you can see what I'm doing here. But it is uh, quite tricky and you've got to be fairly delicate with this. So there we go. I've, I've managed to ease out some of them fibres. Like so. And the rest are staying. Then I'm going to get one, two, three. I'll bring that over. One. Oh, there we go. It snapped away. Partridge is fairly brittle anyway. So it does, uh, you know, you've got to be careful with it. But... On the traverse side of that is when it's done its job, you can just snap it off as long as you've secured it, of course. The next thing then is for the pheasant tail thorax cover to come over the top like so. I've got to try and get this under a bit of tension. I don't want it splitting particularly. And then once I've got that in position, I can get a few wraps down, a few wraps in front, and then I can simply come in with my scissors and take away the excess pheasant tail. Now, the next thing to do is to tidy up at the head here. Just make sure you get it, all them cut ends to disappear. You can build yourself 
a nice head. I suppose you could put a red head on if you wanted, or yellow, what you know, whatever you fancy. Really, it's up to you. But um, I like to keep this nice and drab. I sometimes tie it with brown thread, uh, just to keep the sort of the earth hues going, if you like. But black is what we've tied today. So I'm going to take that away. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to come in again with my Velcro brush. And all I'm doing is I'm pulling the English partridge backwards and I'm just hopefully picking out some of that thorax squirrel dub. And what I've got there is a very nice nymph. Now, to finish the fly, of course, I'm going to come in with a touch of super glue just onto the thread. And the job's a good one.